So I did do a couple of things yesterday, but I didn't have my camera with me. Um, one of the things I did do was fit this, um, the world's cheapest DRO to the milling machine. So I didn't have any batteries, so I'm just gonna, uh, so I couldn't try it out, which is a bit disappointing, but I've got some now, so I'm just gonna try it. So you can see, um, so you can see that it is literally just this one of those cheap ones from Amazon. Uh, I had to the brackets that it came with were all a bit hopeless, so I had to modify it all, make a stainless steel bracket for the back. Um, obviously, drill and tap into the cast iron for the DRO scale, and it was it took a lot longer than it should have done actually. But I have dialed it all in. I mean, it really was cheap, this. I mean, I think it cost about 30 quid. But I've got, this is only one axis. I've got another axis, which is not here yet. That's coming. Uh, so I'll have, that'll, that'll be the, uh, the Y axis. Right, plug it in. Right. Right. Okay. So. This is literally the first time I've been using, I'm gonna use this, so. Right, so I'm gonna go all the way to the far end of the x-axis, let's zero that. That's at a hard stop, I'm gonna come back. About, what, 65 millimeters or something, and then I'm gonna go back to the hard stop and let's see if it ends up at the same place which it does by with a discrepancy of 0.02 of a millimeter let's try that again back to 65 and go all the way back Point zero 0.01 I mean it's Oh, now it's back to zero. Zero two. Well, I mean, for 30 quid, I think it's not bad. And another thing I did yesterday was I just made another one of these uh, uh, hole penetrators. This is going to be for a um, removable boy, so um, a surface marker boy, which I should be able to wind. I need to be able to wind it. Um, on Jody B, I use a, I didn't have one. Uh, so I use a uh, dog lead, but that only gives me 10 meters if it's one dog lead and then 20 if I use two. Um, so with this one, I think I can, I can make a winch and everything and I can uh, wind it in. I think it'd be a lot easier. So I've just got to actually um, spin the hole round and finish the welding on the inside of that last penetrator. And then I literally have finished all of the, all the parts that are in the hole. So I'm just... Um, debating whether to put the battery pods on now or the end cap. Um, I shall have a think. So interestingly, um, with the variable tank, the, fir the, the first variable tank in, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but it, it sort of counteracts the weight of the tower. So I can actually spin this round now. I mean, it's not super easy, but it's certainly easier than it was. It's all sort of counterbalancing itself so that'll help for a bit so this is the sort of uh, reality of the small submarine I mean I I knew this was going to happen but here it's really difficult to get in and and weld and do stuff but you know like I said I knew this was going to happen so just got to get on with it you just have to make sure that you've got all your stuff ready respirator, silly hat, gloves, and if you forget anything you have to get out and start again. So I remembered everything, but I've forgotten to switch the machine on.
you can see, it's just uh, this is devil to get in, but did get round all okay. Okay, so that really was the last penetrator or last thing to go in through the hull that I know of. Um, it might be that I add something extra um, in the future, but as, that, as far as the actual uh, design goes, that's the last one. So I don't know whether to put the end cap on I'm, I'm, or the battery pods. I think I'm going to cut the holes for the battery pods first anyway. So let's get that done. Now I've got to make sure that I don't... Um, mess this up and get them around the wrong way. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm not just going to simply measure, I'm going to actually offer it up into position, which is going to be a rigmarole, but it, it, I just need to be, I just want to be absolutely sure that I need to be within two millimeters on my accuracy. So the only way to do that for me is to actually offer it up into position. So um, this is the top end but this is on the starboard side, which means that as I'm upside down, I'm going to be on this side. I'm going to be on this side. I'll just take the end cap off just in order to uh, lighten it up a little bit and make it a bit easier to manoeuvre about. I'm going to take this inner out as well, the battery tray. It seems ages of ages ago I made these. It was. And they were a pain. Haven't <clears throat> mm. been under here for a while. So this is the right one, but it's got to be spun round a little bit. Right, so I need to just sort of measure. Just want to measure that everything is right, which it is. By the looks of things. My reference point for both is going to be the middle. So I just need to mark the centre of this uh, pod bit. Pod? Um, connector. Then I can put the angle on. But it all looks like it's lining up good. So I've got the, the, the pipe strapped on with a, with a ratchet strap. And I'm just going to... This is going to be my reference point. I'll use this for the other one as well. So I'm just going to jiggle that so it's in the middle. Up there. So that should be my measured distance. There's a gap there. There. I'm going to measure that. And the same there. In fact, let's measure it properly just to be sure. So, if we were splitting hairs, it would need to come this way by a millimeter. Yeah. Same with that. Okay, so it does need to go this, that way a little bit more. It's actually pretty accurate. That's 20, which is what it should be. 20 and a tickle. Yeah. We can leave it at that. 20, yeah, it's pretty good. That is pretty good. Right now, the reason I've done this, as I've said, is so that I can get this correct. 
Um, awkward to do this. I think this was 80 this year. That's slack on the line I drew anyway. Okay. That is where it needs to be. At 45 degrees round. Now I've got to do the same with the other one. And I've done the same with the uh, with the other side, just exactly the same. Okay, so I've just worked out that uh, I'm 281 millimetres down from the centre line. So I've marked that there on both sides and I'm just doing a, a sort of a sanity check as well. So I've, I've rigged up this uh, 45 degree builder's square thing up against the wall. Uh, and this, this is just roughly, just to sort of eyeball it into the right place so that's at 45 degrees and then if I come along and it's about there and then so it kind of lines up more or less you know it's not it's not a super accurate test it's just to just to eyeball it make sure that I've got it right which I have and I'm going to just double check my calculation again in a minute so you would have thought that I could measure the arc length um, somehow on this drawing, but um, if I do it, if I do measure the arc length, it'll let me do it like there on a arc that's not um, an actual radius or a diameter, but it won't let me select part of a circle, which seems a bit odd. So I'm going to do it a different way. Now, because it's an arc, it'll let me do that dimension, which is 281 as I measured. So I was right. Right, I know there's chains in the way, I can't help it. I'm just more anxious to make sure I've got this curtain closed so that I don't get smoke and potential things catching fire next door. I normally drill a hole, but I can't be bothered, so I'm going to pierce it. I have to stop because I can't see always a problem. It's got to grind it out now. <laughs> 